you. So this this is about just the last presentation I did about a month and a half ago was about emotions and stress and how so many people don't even know they're ad uh, addicted to adrenaline. This presentation is about the battle is for the mind because think about it if you have a sick mind whether it's anger stress it's it's going to come between you and god and it's it's going to be hard to have that conversation and it's going to be hard to be in that sanctification process that we're all going through it's going to make everything more difficult so uh, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So God is there. We're not supposed to follow our own thoughts, our own emotions. We're supposed to lean on God, the Holy Spirit, to lead us. So can we all agree that Satan is a liar? Yes. Mm -hmm. John 8, 44, Ye are of your father the devil and the lusts of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own he is a liar and the father of it and just like pastor danny was talking about today uh he has all the same tricks and he just rewraps them for us so the battles for the mind romans 12 2 and be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we all want to be like God, emulate God. So if, if you'll just think about that throughout this whole process, we're trying to emulate God. Not what the world tells us to do, not what the world tells us to strive for, but what God tells us. So train the mind so uh, e.g. white says train the mind train and discipline the mind no matter who you are the lord has blessed you with intellectual faculties capable of vast improvements cultivate your talents with persevering earnestness train and discipline the mind by study by observation by reflection you cannot meet the mind of god unless you put to use every power so we've got to strengthen our mind but it's not anything that, you know, miraculous. We have to put forth the effort, just like everything with God. It's a relationship, and we have to put forth the effort. So we have to train up our minds. And uh, self-discipline must be practiced. An ordinary mind, well-disciplined, will accomplish more in higher work than, well, the most highly educated mind and the greatest talents without self-control. So self-control is a big part of this and we, we've all heard about you know uh, people great athletes who don't practice and don't have discipline they're outdone by people with less gifts who work harder so this is about having the discipline working harder okay attacks on the mind sin worry doubt confusion any of these things in your life ever Drugs, alcohol, pornography, gluten, etc. What was that? It says gluttony. Gluttony. Says gluttony. Gluttony. Thank you. <laughs> Isaiah 26 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, those whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. So who is him? God. Uh, you. But when when oh, uh, yeah he will keep yeah, us in perfect us. peace yeah, that's us. when we seek God okay and God himself brought down the enemies of the believers he won the victory for us so the victory is already won cool. now this will make you think if you're thinking you don't deserve a second chance from God it's important to remember that you didn't deserve the first one either True. and I didn't mm -hmm. deserve the first one either by his mercy is there we amen Okay, we're going to talk about PTSD, post-traumatic stress <coughs> disorder. And most people think it's a military issue. You know, people go to war, they're stressed out, they go, they see their, their friends murdered, and they come back with PTSD, which, which is horrible. But it is not just a military issue. Post-traumatic stress disorder can develop after a very stressful, frightening, or distressing event, or a prolonged traumatic experience. 
such as serious accidents, you're in a car wreck, you can have PTSD. Uh, exposure to traumatic events at work, you're highly stressed at work, you can have PTSD. Death of someone close to you, death of a child, a spouse, these are all normal things that happen to us in, the, in this life, right? Physical, sexual assault, abuse, including childhood trauma, domestic abuse, can all cause PTSD. Serious health problems, such as being admitted to intensive care, childbirth experiences, losing a baby, war and conflict, absolutely. E.G. White says, if in our ignorance we make mistakes, the Savior does not forsake us. We need never feel that we are alone. Angels are our companions. The comforter that Christ promised to send in his name <coughs> abides with us. In the way that leads to the city of God, there are no difficulties which those who trust in him may not overcome. There are no dangers which they may not escape. There is not sorrow, not a grievance, not a human weakness for which he has not uh, provided a remedy. Amen. So what does that mean to you? Whatever you're going through, God has provided for you. Amen. Amen. And, you know, that gives me peace. Even in, in my toughest times when I'm stressed, that gives me peace. And, and what was the word? Not a grievance, not a human weakness for which he has not provided. So whatever you're going through. Okay. Who's at risk for PTSD? We've already talked a little about it, but if you've had depression or anxiety in the past, uh, or you did not receive, and you didn't receive uh, much support from your family and friends, you may be more likely to develop PTSD after a traumatic event. That's why family and friends are important to, to communicate with them, to have that support system. Normally when in danger, the body produces stress hormones like adrenaline, if, if y'all were here a month and a half ago when we talked about adrenaline. To trigger a reaction in the body, high adrenaline levels are required. And, and it's that uh, fight or flight response as well. Studies have shown that people with PTSD have abnormal levels of stress hormones. Normally when in danger, the body produces stress hormones like adrenaline to trigger a reaction in the body. The reaction, often known as the fight-or-flight reaction, helps to deaden the senses and dull the pain, okay? People with PTSD have, found, uh, have been found to continue to produce high amounts of fight-or-flight hormones when there's no danger. That's the problem. That's the problem. So the danger has passed. God gave us adrenaline to help us survive. The danger has passed, and we're still the body's still producing that adrenaline and you're still in that fight or flight mode and you're dealing that way with your loved ones, people at work, they wonder why, you know, your anxiety level is high, why maybe you're overreacting, here we go. It's thought this may be responsible for the numbed emotions, a hyper arousal experienced by some people with PTSD. Even in depression, worship. Even in anxiety, worship. Even in the fear, worship. God is offering you his peace when you praise him, more of him, and less of you. Amen. What are the symptoms? Agitation, nervousness, anxiety, problems with concentration or thinking, problems with memory. Headaches. Depression, crying spells, suicidal thoughts or attempts, mood swings, obsessive compulsive tendencies, panic episodes, paranoia, shakiness. So again, not just a war issue from, for veterans. <clears throat> Substance abuse, you know, people are, look for things other than God. Substance abuse to, uh, to deaden that pain that they're suffering. <clears throat> Flashbacks. Hypervigilance, nightmares, sleep uh, disturbances, and that's another thing we need to talk about too while we're talking about the battle is for the mind, sleep disturbances. If you're not getting the proper amount of sleep, eight, nine hours, and you're not sleeping from eight or nine o'clock through those eight or nine hours, it's gonna affect your body, 
It's going to affect your brain, the way you process information. So even if you have normal stress in your life, if you're not getting normal sleep that you're supposed to be getting, then you're going to be reacting to that stress in, in a hyper way. Yes, Maria. I just want to uh, add to it because somebody, somebody would be great information. Why from eight to nine is all good to sleep because of the uh, protein that is of uh, the body develops and melatonin, uh, which is responsible for repairs in our brain, repairs in our tissues, organs, taking the waste out and everything. So, and it goes up to 2 a.m. and then started to go down. And by the morning when you wake up even at seven, it comes to close to the zero. So if you go sleep, uh, around 12 p.m. you're missing of that restoration because the melatonin uh, comes uh, to rise with the darkness. When the darkness come uh, in a day, that's where God created we have to go sleep, but uh, we have an enemy that changed the times, the Bible says, right? And the time changes like so, 12 a.m. is the day. No, the sundown is the new day started. Great, thank you. Okay, continue. Changes in the brain. Uh, in people with PTSD, parts of the brain involved in emotional processing appear different in brain scans, so it's proven. One part of the brain responsible for memory and emotions is known as the uh, hippocampus. In people with PTSD, hippocampus appears smaller in size. It's thought that the changes in part of the brain may be related to fear and anxiety, memory problems, and flashbacks. Uh, manipulation of uh, hippocampus may prevent flashbacks and nightmares being properly processed. So anxiety, uh, so the anxiety they generate does not reduce over time. It's like being on all the time. Treatment of PS PTSD results in proper processing of the memory, so over time the flashbacks and nightmares gradually disappear. Uh, problems of PTSD symptoms can worsen over time. This can include uh, increased anxiety, depression, feelings of uh, isolation, that's why friends and family are important. Flashbacks, nightmares, and other symptoms can become more frequent and intense. Generally, uh, last uh, for a, uh, generally they, it lasts for a month. Symptoms may recur or intensify in response to reminders of the traumatic event. Uh, ongoing life stressors or newly experienced traumatic events. A person can have PTSD for years or the rest of their lives. Satan's playbook, isolate, anxiety, and depression, right? God's playbook, focus on God, Prayer, brethren, faith. Philippians uh, 4, 6, 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall, uh, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. And then we have 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And this is the top scripture for anxiety and depression for me. It's just to know that God does, in fact, care for us. But cast all, all of our cares uh, to God. A question? Yes. Can I ask a question? Of course. So if someone, because, you know, I was just saying this, I have someone thinking about it, that one, they don't have, either they don't have any friends or they, um, I'm not sure if they enjoy being by themselves. And some of those symptoms you mentioned, and they have all those, you know, they, you know, uh, I'm trying to suggest them getting some help, but, you know, they have to, I guess, want to get the help. But, but that's the problem because the depression makes them want to be alone more. So it, it, it produces, the depression produces the symptoms to keep them in in that bondage, in that bondage. So sometimes uh, you you've heard of uh, of terms like you have to have uh, an intervention, right? You have to have loved ones come to that person. Sometimes two or three people that that person knows very well and say, "Hey, I, I know you're not going to agree with us, but all three of us agree." that we're seeing this change in you or we're seeing you acting in response this way and we love you 
and we want to make sure that we're communicating this to you that we think you know you should uh, reach out for help because if it's just one person a lot of time you know it's just going to be okay well you don't know you don't know how I'm feeling so uh, that, that works a lot of times if that makes sense Praise God, you're doing better. But, no, but obviously, hormones, family, all kinds of things affect people, and it's it's not a bad thing. It just happens to people, just like anything else. So God says and does it when we meet His conditions, right? Psalms 34:4. I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. But what is it? I sought the Lord. God is a deliverer. He hears our prayers, will deliver us from our fears. Don't be deceived. After you repent and ask God for forgiveness and he forgives you, does God say, I want you not to forgive yourself and continue, continue suffering about this thing, or does he say, dust it off, move on, and it is done? And that's a question. Which which God do we serve? The second one. Does stop. Move on. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I just uh, would have to say the anxiety, depression to me is largely not all, but largely is the issue of obedience. We give a command to not be anxious about anything. So the fear of the Lord will make you stand in the right path where you will refuse on purpose to be anxious about anything or get depressed, even get scared to be depressed. And do the opposite. If uh, the enemy wants you to be isolated and depressed, you make a decision because you're given a mind, an intellect that has to control the body. 
body. You do the opposite. You go to the brother, it's like you, Carlos brought um, a, a verse, right? Or, or a statement, or go to the brother. You do the opposite. You wanna stay at home in darkness, open the windows, let the sun come in, go outside. And uh, keeping the eight laws, the eight principle of health for the mind and for the body. Yeah, we're we're gonna get to that. Do you mind closing that door? Yeah, Thank right. you. <laughs> Some situations, however, that we find ourselves in, whether it is by, you know, by our actions or otherwise, <clears throat> uh, could help, could get us very stressed out. And it's real. It's we have real. to admit to the fact that yes. the stress comes on the human body and the human mind. Some things that are so great, we can't deal with it, we really don't know how to, and we, we despair. And so we need to acknowledge when we feel like that, and we need to get the help that we need. Because sometimes by just saying, hey, I'm, I should be a, I'm a Christian and I should, it doesn't work out. It really doesn't because the situation, some people live in situations day in, day out without a change. And we need to understand how this impacts on the human mind. Hey, amen, and, and there's no shame in it at all at all and, and absolutely it's as real as if there's a rainstorm and walking into it and getting wet right. it is it is that that's real right. that's right 100 percent. so romans 2 uh romans 3 23 for i have sinned for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god again who sinned all all, all. so when you sin as you repent God forgives you. Let's move on. Amen. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. God forgave you. Now have enough faith to believe God and forgive yourself and move on. Because there's a lot of people that get stuck and I can't believe I was so horrible. I can't believe I did that. And they're not forgiving themselves. And that, that is terrible. Yes. Well, you know, in the first uh, phase, phrase, it says, um, confess your sins. Right. Confess your sins. Yeah. And Because it's a promise, and God always honor His promises. Amen. But if you, if He says He's going to forgive you, and you ask for forgiveness, and you don't accept that forgiveness, you are on the devil's territory. Yeah. That's yeah, absolutely. It's a, he forgives you. Absolutely. You can move on. God, God Almighty can mean. forgive you, and you're saying I can't forgive myself. Yeah. I'm it just an ant. Sense. I'm just an ant, and yeah. God Almighty is forgiving yeah. me. I have, and again, remember when we started this presentation, I said, keep in mind that we're here to emulate God. Amen. Yes. And if God is forgiving us, then we should forgive ourselves. Yes. Amen. That, that never forgives you for you to go back to sin. Absolutely. He forgives you to have a new life. And, and to grow in God yes. and sanctification yes. versus staying in prison mm -hmm. and in chains. Can you give an example where people do not accept the forgiveness of God? Oh, I, I've talked to a lot of people here at this church because I was doing the presentation uh, and they shared with me that th this was one of their issues, that they felt that what they did was so bad, they, even though they have remorse, they repented properly, they asked for forgiveness, but it still stays with them. 
Yeah, the guilt. And, and I, 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 what I said here, important. So it's so important that we're going to talk about it one more time. And it's Luke 7, uh, 40 through 43. And Jesus answering unto him, Simon, I have somewhat, somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. So what does that mean to you? What does that scripture mean to you? Well, the man he was talking to, Simon, had more to have forgiven. Uh, he had actually led Mary into sin, he tells us. But what we, what we were just talking about was the person that thinks that they've sinned so horribly, what they did was so horrible that they can't forgive themselves, but God forgave them. Mm -hmm. So God is saying, Jesus is saying, who, who, who will love the forgiveness more? So really the one that did the worst thing should love it the most. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. And that, that's so true that, you know, Paul himself spoke about his sin. Like, you know, he stole the, and martyred so many people, right? And see, Paul now was seeing that he had a great work to do for God, that, you know, that he is the greatest sinner, he would tell others, Say you know, again. to, to yes. let them know that if God could forgive me for yes. what I have done, he certainly can forgive you. And I think that's where um, people understand and forgiveness is. Sometimes we need to share our stories so that others can see they too can be forgiven. Yes. And Paul was very open with his testimony of his, you know, the things he had done to um, inflict pain on the church. And now he, as a greatest sinner, God had forgiven him, so he owed much. Yes, ma'am. You know, I'd like to go back to King Manasseh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you read about yeah. King Manasseh's life, it was terrible. He killed his children killed all kinds of other people. He had Isaiah, we think, maybe yes. saw it in half. Yeah. But what happened before he died? He repented and God forgave him. Oh, yeah. so, so he's going to be in heaven. But he bottom, may, he's, yeah. he's going to meet Isaiah. <laughs> but I think line, Isaiah won't have some questions. Uh, bottom line, I think, is there's a righteous way to look at the forgiveness that God gives us and there's what Satan would want us to say oh you're not, your your sin was so terrible that God couldn't forgive you and you should continue to wallow in that and while you're wallowing in that you're not growing in Christ but you know that you're saying the worst problem is also when you can't forgive other people yes mm -hmm. Because you've got that all locked up in you. You've got all this hate, all this anger, all this everything in there. And it just builds and builds and builds. I know people who, you know, they did that to me. No. It's terrible, but that affects their mind. Can you imagine? Yes. They're, they're actually being held in their own bondage, in, in their prison. own mind, yeah. in prison by unforgiveness. Why did God put forgiveness Forgive so you can be forgiven. Why is it why is it all over the Bible? Because it's so important. Yeah. Because otherwise you are tortured. And I've seen people that can't forgive. And it, it is terrible to see. Can I say? Yes. So when it comes to forgiveness throughout the Bible, we see one thing. You cannot silence your conscience. You it might be a trap from Satan. When your conscience tells you that you have to confess sin, you come and confess, even know in your mind that God forgives, right? Because if your conscience troubles you, you don't stop to ask for forgiveness. You come because it says, my sheep hears my voice. And so sometimes God will uh, forgive from first time, but will make you to plead so you can learn the lesson. That's what we read in the Bible, right? We're, we're, we read 
even in the spirit of prophecy, she said never fast for forgiveness uh, of sin. You can fast for um, understanding of sin, what you have done and God will reveal, but never fast for forgiveness of sin, right? And so my point is, let us be aware when we think that God forgives <coughs> us right away and our conscience tells us a different way, right? We have to come till we will have peace. Having peace, that will make you free from guilt, truly. Well, you have, you to, go, you have to go back to the word of God and what God says. That, that's what God says. You God forgives us. God. How do we respond? Do we say, praise God, glory to God? Or do we say, I reject God's salvation because my sins are too much for God? The second option sounds like Satan. Mm -hmm. I think we've covered that. Mm -hmm. Satan makes it about you, and we need to make it about Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God for his grace and forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Wow. Control your emotions or they'll control you. Insecurity, self-esteem issues, impulse control, chaotic childhood. You know, there's nobody here that's had a perfect childhood or a perfect growing up or even perfect uh, uh, as an adult. Are, are you sabotaging good things? You, us, me, am I sabotaging good things? How do you know you've been triggered? Are you breathing harder? Breathing faster? Walking faster? Talking faster? Not thinking your words through before you speak them? Are you just reactionary? Are your words harsher? Do you shield yourself from your ang angry, destructive words by saying, I say this for your benefit? Or it's your fault. You provoked me. Could it be self self righteous heart? Could it be a hardened heart? Could you be making matters worse? Remember, and I mean, uh, you know, Pastor Danny talked about it today. You know, uh, how Jesus at times didn't respond, and he could have responded very harshly, and he didn't. Maybe and. And maybe when you feel you're breathing faster and, and, and excited and that adrenaline kicking in, maybe that's the time you walk away. Maybe that's the time you count to 50 or 100. Or maybe you need to count to 1,000. I don't know. Uh, but just this is about becoming self-aware. Self-aware. We need to control ourselves. We're representing God. Could it be a broken heart? Yes, it could be. But again... Now you're responsible. And we talked about this uh, during the study this morning. You can't control what happens to you, but you can control how you react to it. And again, what did we say at the beginning of the presentation? We need to emulate God and Jesus. What would Jesus do? So the devil's lie. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. No, the Bible says be like Christ. Amen. I had a conversation uh, with two young men. Uh, they were well, young men. They are about 25 each. And one of them told me, one, he was shy, and I was having a conversation. The other brother, who was a twin, was not shy. And the shy one says, and, and they're both Adventists, and the shy one says, I'm trying to be true to myself with my shyness. <laughs> That's part of you, right? <laughs> yes. So there seems to be like this big moment um, in our country where it's like there's a heavy emphasis being placed on you need to be true to yourself you need to be you know how you are but the question becomes for the Christian is that if I am true to myself with all these tendencies that I've inherited from you know who knows generation or millennia of you know degradation do I need to be true to that self or do I need to ask Christ is me be true to myself going to go against you because if that's the case then Lord I need to be willing to be somebody else. else. Exactly. Right. Well, well said. And my response to him was, I said, there's so many people you could be reaching for Christ that you're not. I said, you're a smart guy. You've got a lot to share. And the only person you talk to is your wife. And you're not sharing with others. But in his mind, again, misled, uh, it was, I'm being true to myself. This is who I am. I don't want to be a fake. Well, you know, you fake it till you make it. 
Seriously. Yeah. You know, again, emulate Christ. Yes. Yes. Uh, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, yeah. even yeah. our faith. John 5, 4. Okay. Is there anything too big for God to overcome? I believe that God can use a shy person Absolutely. to reach out to a shy. I'm not a shy person. Yeah. So we can, whether we are bold or shy, we can still be used by God. But, but I understand that he was keeping himself prisoner in his shyness. Yes. Uh, thinking that, oh, he's doing a great thing by not changing or trying to change. And very smart guy, good presence, nice person, loves God, but he's keeping himself in, in this uh, in this prison, sh yet shackles, and he thinks he's doing good by doing this, by being himself. I was very shy. I was born shy. Really? Uh, I was an athlete in high school. I walked around like this with my books. I didn't talk to anyone. And, and they said, boy, he's just really stuck on himself. No, I was shy. I was shy. And, and I grew out of it. That's, I grew out of it. But I was open to growing. And being shy, it's a horrible thing. It's a, You're alienated. It's not good. It is not good. And if you notice all these attacks from Satan, what does he do? He takes God's lambs and he alienates them. He gets them off by themselves. And that's why part of the solution for God is to be with the brethren, to be with loved ones, to share experiences, and to have a support system. To grow. Yes. Um, I was going to say that I was very shy when I was young. And I read in Mrs. White's writings that it's a form of self-centeredness. Mm. You can't see past yourself. You're stuck mm -hmm. in this bubble, mm -hmm. and you can't see beyond yourself. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't feel that way. It just felt I was just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't feel like that. Yes, Dan. Anybody that says they want to be true to their self or whatever, Jeremiah says that the heart is desperately wicked. We don't want to be true to ourselves. We no. want to be true to God. Absolutely. Amen. 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 100%. Thank you. Just shy, being shy, you just don't want to be uncomfortable. Oh, it's definitely and, uncomfortable. And that's yeah. what it is. It's really about self indeed because it's you protecting yourself from what you think is going to be disruptive to you or feel not right or uncomfortable. So you want a safe space. And you feel like maybe just being by yourself is a safe space. Having to deal with other people and what they bring, you're not too sure about that. And I think that's what shyness is. Yeah, like. yeah. Maybe it's, it was at some point some kind of protective shell that you've right. been uh, around. And I think the way Satan, can, he, he kind of uh, turns it upside down in the sense that there's this push, it, the push to say, uh, to be yourself, well, natural mm -hmm. fact is when when you're being yourself, we don't realize your need of a savior. When once you realize your need of a savior, then God can work with you, and you can be in a position where God can save you. Pretty much. Yeah, and that's a really good point. But even if if you dissect the, the statement of uh, just be yourself. Does that mean this person has already gone through the sanctification process? They've already uh, arrived? They're already Christ-like? No, there's no way. So it's an untrue statement, and it's one that we can't fulfill. Only Christ can fulfill. The yes. Next, the next step from that would seem like, do what thou wilt, which is what Satan promotes yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. And that's why it says... Uh, the devil's lie. Absolutely. And that path is not going anywhere good. Not a good destination. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? No. No. We just have to seek him out and rely on him. And lots of prayers, supplication, and faith. Emotions. For, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made uh, the righteousness of God in him. Self-control is strength. 
Calmness is mastery. Okay? Mm -hmm. Get to the point where your mood does not shift because of the significant actions of someone else or events around you. May we have God's peace. Mm -hmm. Don't allow your emotions to overpower your intelligence, faith, and teachings of Jesus. Believe God. We cannot fool him or outsmart him. That's for sure. <laughs> Samson, a little history lesson. Samson died for his inability to control his emotions for Delilah, a non-believer. His flesh and his inability to control his passion for a worldly woman finished him. God gave Samson great strength, yet when he disobeyed God, he was captured, blinded, and enslaved by the Philistines. Wise counsel, Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. And, and I want to add someone, if you don't mind, to that. Samson died for his inability to control his emotions for Delilah, a non-believer. But David also lost a whole lot, mm -hmm. um, not being able to control his emotions for a married Christian woman, too. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to point out that we, you know, whether the person be a non-believer, or a believer, it doesn't matter. Not the issue. Oh, no. The issue is the lack of inability to control your emotions pride and, so pride. and your pride and the loss yes. and all these factors. And so we need to keep recognize that when we as watch children we have that problem, we are going to lose out for it. Yes, and, and we need to stop making excuses if we have that problem. That's right. Yes, Dan. So the great controversy is in everyone's brain between the amygdala and the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is a connection with God. The amygdala is the conceit of all of our emotions. We have to not suppress our frontal lobe so that we have control and communication with God. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Chronicles of read in the book uh, today, but I want to bring it out in this context. So it says of one king who was doing what is right in God's eyes, actually, right? But then he slept, and his pride came, and he became self-centered. Mm -hmm. And what happened, uh, he was struck by the Lord, it says, with the leprosy in his forehead. Mm -hmm. Leprosy in his forehead. And your forehead is responsible for your choices. Yes. So he becomes a leper mm -hmm. in your forehead, and the mark of the beast, like I met, right? Those who are lepers in their forehead, will yeah. not sin, right? So that, that meaning that what you said, mm -hmm. that it's not enough to do just right. Mm -hmm. And then you read in Chronicles and it explains why he couldn't stand because it says he did what was right in God's eyes, but he had no perfect heart. That's true. A perfect heart, we have to strive for, for a perfect heart in order to avoid all of it and have temperance. Yes. Going off of uh, Brian comment, you know, how we need our frontal lobe intact to be able to follow God's word and not succumb to our emotions and to do everything that we can to not weaken it. That's where diet and food comes into play straight away. Right? So Council yes. on Diets and Food talks about it extensively, how if we overeat, we enervate your system, we overtax our stomach, our blood flows to our our digestive organs to be able to carry out its work. Where does that blood flow now not go to the core of our brain? Our thinking is not clear and how then can we be obedient to God? And it just it's kind of like a rolling thing that you know it affects and it ties into even today's sermon about appetite and everything. That affects to, everything. To, yeah. yeah it's, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Has anyone ever seen this? Does anyone know where I'm going with this story? Yes. You do? Okay, well, don't say anything. Okay. So uh, th there was a serpent, and uh, it was crawling on the ground, and it and, and crawled over this saw. 
and it cut itself, right? And, ah. the, and then, so there was a snake, it crawled over a saw, it caused great pain, and so it squeezed the saw, the saw, and the more pain it felt, the harder it squeezed until it died. We have to learn how to let go of the pain, how to move on, how to give it to Christ and the one that said, Come unto me, all ye that labor, that are heavy laden, and will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest in, unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How many people in here right now, don't raise your hand, uh, are carrying a lot of pain that you're just hanging on to? And I'll tell you what, after a while, that pain becomes warm and kind of nice and you don't want to let it go but it's hurting you okay you do yeah I'm yeah it becomes, your identity. it becomes your identity thank you yes. that's true and it's sad and all you have to do letting go is forgiveness it's it's taking a backpack off and dropping it and it's a choice forgiveness yeah and un unforgiveness uh, I have a good friend of mine uh, who was a preacher, and he said, uh, and his father was a preacher as well. He said his father always said unforgiveness is being stung by the same bee over and over and over again. Wow. Now, what's the problem when you can't get out of the way of that same one bee or swat it down? He's hanging on to unforgiveness. He or she is hanging on to unforgiveness. You have to let go. And, and it's within your power to let go. God gave you that power. He said forgive to be forgiven mm -hmm. he gave you that power yeah. and if you're still having trouble with it talk to god talk to god and he, he'll he'll take it away from you yes ma'am oh yeah well i always think forgiveness i i mean what am i trying to say is it a gift or is it a choice because sometimes it's I a gift if you'll take it well yeah. <laughs> it's a choice. well the thing is is that Sometimes you think you've forgiven somebody and then it comes back up and then you're like, wait, I haven't forgiven them. God, I told you I forgave them and now they're making me upset again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, God, why I keep telling you, please help me forgive these people, like people I grew up with, whatever. It's because and then I realized God is like looking at me saying, you're the one that has the problem because you're saying you're forgiving them, but there's some things in your own life that you can't let go. But, but isn't that know, interesting? No, no, it's not that complicated. Tell, I, no, I, it's, it's pretty easy. Uh, here's, the, here's the deal. Me that I didn't forgive them. Here, you, you got two doors, okay? So you've got two doors, and there's the person, and this is like one of those doors in, in, in front of a hotel that goes around and around. You got the person that has already made up their mind. When somebody wrongs me, my God tells me to forgive. It's automatic for them, okay? And then you got that person at the other door that's got to think about it, got to find the key for that door. <laughs> oh, it's not that key. Uh, got to unlock this lock, this lock. Do I really want to forgive them this time? How bad what, did they do me this time? Oh, okay. This lock. Do you understand the difference? You want to be in this automatic door. You say, so when somebody hurts you, they're forgiven. You don't have to think about it too hard. It's because God tells you so is good enough. And you know that you need that forgiveness to give to them to be forgiven. You're going to feel better. So you need to be in this door, not this door of all the locks that you have to unlock to forgive them. Now think, why would Christ say, bless your enemies, pray for those who persecute you? This is the remedy for you to be free. You have to keep those who offended you and those whom you cannot forgive. All this, bless them, bless them, and pray for them nonstop, and you will see it will flee. You will have compassion towards them, nothing else. Yeah, Connor? Uh, she asks if it's a gift or if it's a choice. Uh, I interpret it as it's a it's a gift to be able to choose. That's my son. That's how boy. Man, young. 
I would, I would like to share a scripture that backs up that it is a gift. Okay. So it's in Acts chapter 5 and verse 31 and 32 where it says that forgiveness is a gift from God. It reads as this, Acts chapter 5, 31. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So it's given, uh, so Jesus gives us the gift of repentance and forgiveness of sins. Yeah, Jesus gives us, but we have to be That's like him and we have to give the gift of forgiveness to others. Yes. Amen. Dan, did you have something? <coughs> I just thought it was important to point out when you forgive someone, it's not condoning what they did to you. They yes, could have done correct. something really bad to you, but God Great. asks you to forgive yeah. them. Yeah. You're not condoning what That's they right. did. And in some cases, you need to get away from that person yeah. even, yeah. but you still need to forgive them Absolutely. for you. Yeah. If you don't, it's like taking poison and hoping that they get hurt by it. Yes, <laughs> great point. So does it mean that if I forgive somebody, whatever wrong they did to me, and then that person knows I'm forgiving him or her, but if I'm keeping a distance between me and that person, does it mean I still didn't forgive that person? No, no, no. 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 You don't have to be friends with him. Exactly. Be, be wise. <laughs> be wise. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that, that's wisdom. That's wisdom. You're not putting yourself in a position to have to repeatedly forgive them. You know, what the, um, you know what the truth is, though, this forgiveness? If you don't forgive one person, you will not see heaven. How much do you love Jesus to see? How much do you want to be in heaven? This has to be the first point in your forgiveness when you come. Do you want to get to heaven? It's in the Lord's Prayer. It is. Well, what forgive them as I forgive them, yes. And he my said, death. love your enemies. And you know, the thing about it, sometimes God wants you to understand that some people, the way they behave, they don't know the love of God. Yes. You know the love of God. Amen. And so God wants you to be in your sphere to teach them the love of God. Mm. So by you trying to avoid them or stay away, you're not really doing anything to help them. You know, you're still about yourself. You yeah. understand? And it depends. You know, it's situational. But if God has given you, sometimes God allows you to be in straight places so that others can see the love of God. Because if you don't, you're not there, they wouldn't know the love of God. What, what love looks like, what forgiveness looks like, what kindness looks like, what joy looks like, what peace looks like. They wouldn't know that. And sometimes when they are behaving really bad and mean, they say, but you know what? Why is this person so different? They don't react to some of these things we do. They do triggers and they don't see the react. They say, why, why, why is this person behaving like this? You know, and they start to question and inquire and start to look at you. So sometimes you're in a straight place and you're not necessarily there because, you know, it's just the devil. I did it. God yes, is doing so. a work in you. Yeah. And for others too. Okay. You know, with uh, Levitical, we have laws that still bind us. Uh, those laws responsible for uh, like how I react to, uh, how uh, we have communication between each other, between uh, the brother and neighbor, right? Uh, when Jesus said, love your neighbor as thyself, he took it from Leviticus, <laughs> right? And so, love your neighbor as thyself, many say like, oh, I have to love myself in order to love somebody, but this is of the Satan doctrine, this is not true. Mm -hmm. What he meant to say, uh, you don't have to learn how to love yourself. Yeah. You were born yeah. with this. Yeah. And now and go and try to, to love, love the something. same somebody. Take yeah. your eyes from you, right? That's right. This yeah. is what we need to keep in mind yeah. when it Good comes point. to forgiveness or anything else. And keep in mind that love is not a feeling or an emotion, but it's a principle. Yeah. I have a testimony. Mm -hmm. Please. So uh, I would say about maybe 30 years ago, I was married and uh, my ex-husband uh, committed adultery with someone in the church. And 20, 20 years for, uh, forward, the woman came and sent me a message on Facebook and asked for my forgiveness. And she has helped me so much in my life. 
she edited my cookbook, she came and helped me move. And I don't know if she was doing that as a, as a kittens, but I can say that she's one of my good friends now. And it was a miracle. It was a, this was a supernatural miracle because I was, I was immobile when this happened. I was devastated. I had to, you know, go to the doctor. It was just a devastating experience. But I love her. I can say that I truly love her. And her kids call me auntie. The kids that were fathered by my ex-husband. So I'm, I'm not bragging. I just know that the Lord did a supernatural thing in my life. Amen. And when he, when you allow him to take over your heart, he can do supernatural things. Amen. Amen. Praise Lord. And Amen. I can just tell him I'm, I'm five feet away from you. Yeah. And you're happy. Yeah, I am very uh, happy. What would have been the opposite of that mm -hmm. if you hadn't forgiven her? Right. You could have been carrying this horrific load mm -hmm. and anger and all these other issues that would affect other relationships with other people, uh, you know, your trust issues right. and stuff. So praise God. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Praise the Lord. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is a, a, a beautiful scripture, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves and what? Yeah, Submit, therefore. therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will do what? Flee, Flee from you. Amen. You know, I, I've talked to so many veterans, and they said, you know, how are you so brave? And many of them said, no, I was scared. But I was brave for this much longer. You know, you, you hold Amen. on to it. Amen. So resist the devil for this much longer and this much longer and this much longer until he flees. Because that's a promise. That's God's promise. There's another scripture that says you have not resisted unto blood. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So we, we think resistance or some of these things are little things, you know. But no, no, they're kind of big and we have to persevere. I've got a story. It's kind of off key, but we're sharing stories. This will keep keeps you people awake, right? <laughs> so they, they <laughs> so they they they, they dropped uh, these rats in a swimming pool, and I, I forget the amount of time that that they survived. Let's say they survived for thirty minutes. How how long? Uh, it was five minutes. Five minutes. They survived for five minutes, and they go down and they drown. So no, they did another batch, and they dropped them in the pool. And in a couple of minutes, they took them out. And then they dropped them back in. And I think they swam for hours because they thought they that hope. they had hope that they were going to come be saved. <laughs> okay? So we have hope because we, we know Amen. Christ. We Amen. have hope. Amen. He will come Amen. save us and pluck Amen. us. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay, healing. Air, sunlight, temperance. Okay, thank you very much. Air, sunlight, temperance, and rest. And we, we already talked a lot about this, but rest is so important for the mind and the body to recuperate. And Pastor Danny was talking about today about uh, you know eating early and then your body has time to heal. And I gotta tell you, I've started, I don't know how long ago, but I think maybe it's been a couple of months, I started doing the, the two meal thing, the, the breakfast and then lunch. Uh, normally I'm eating lunch about two, sometimes it's four or five, but most of the time it's, it's two-ish and I don't eat again until the next day and I can't put on weight. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I tell you what, you know, you, you just wake up differently and refreshed. Yes. And, you know, and I can't say I, I was ever a big faster or anything like this, but I can do this. Mm -hmm. I, I can do this. And mm -hmm. if I can do it, you can do it. So, I mean, we're talking about, what, 15, 16 hour fast every day yeah. for in allowing your body and mind to heal? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I was sick this week going here. I had COVID and so on. And so while I was sick, a friend of mine called and asked me to do some praying and so on in the morning. And stuff. He said, Felice, I want to share and do this with you. I said, well, okay, I'm home, I'm sick. This is a good opportunity for us to do this. Maybe this was God's doing, mm. you know? Mm. And so in the praying and so on, 
at the end of the you know, we get four o'clock in the morning and I'll do the praying with her and so on. And we would do the songs and whatnot. And she was, you know, sharing things with me, you know, the prayer was really about changing and transformation of your life, you know. And during the day, God had me listen to a podcast with a gentleman who is not a Sunday Adventist, who was talking about these eight laws of God. Amen. And he was talking to a group of young men mm. who was worldly, but they respect him so much because he's put his lifestyle out there. He's a doctor of health, mm. naturopathic, but he was a pharmacist first, a doctor of mm. pharmacy and they admire him. So when they listen to him speak and start to talk about the laws, first of all, they talk about meditating and so, but the way he brought it, I am listening to a man who doesn't know what we know, you know? Mm. And speaking with such confidence about it. Mm. Able to stir these young, vibrant men to mm. a point where they who have a lifestyle that is totally different, <clears throat> want to do it. And I'm saying, Lord, look how this man, he's sticking to what he's saying. He's holding to the fact that you must be a love for yourself. And that love for yourself must come from the one who created you, just as a man in the world. Because, and sister, the prophecy tells us, uh, pay attention to the thinking man. Yes. And she uses the word a thinking man. Thinking man in science, true science only confirms God's plan. Amen. That's why. Amen. That's why we need to listen. You know, if you will take a look at the historians right now, they figured out third and the fourth generation, the iniquity comes and the nation is punished. This is the fact that has nothing to do with God in, in them, but it's described in the Bible from the beginning. Mm -hmm. A wars, uh, like kind of punishment, but the fourth and the third the generation of the punishment comes. Every time they expect something. As a matter of fact, it was it's, it's proven every time. And the last thing we had, 2020. And now it says 2025, probably something. So be, we'll be aware. And this fasting, we called to fast from 1844. We called to fast, to weep, to repent, to search for cleanliness and everything. And this fast, what Carlos is talking about, two times a meal, right, uh, a day, gives you that fast every day. But I wanted to say that this young man, it, it brought something to me because I feel okay. I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't do this. You know, we mm -hmm. get caught up in, I don't do this, I don't do that. Are but we haven't taken, no? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't received everything. You see? We don't receive everything. We still think, okay, I, can, I, do the, I don't do this, but I'm still doing, you understand? But I saw a man in the world. I want to tell you this. Mm -hmm. Seeing him embrace everything. Mm -hmm. It was, I felt poor. Because he understands that scientifically knowledge leads people to destruction. Yeah, but so I'm, I'm he saying, knows he's not uh, yeah, but I'm saying that we have it right. through the spirit. Yes. But we, we fight it. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Fight yeah. Yeah. we fight We fight it. We yeah. resist it. Yeah. And I had, because this young lady was leading me into this prayer, God allowed me to see that in myself. That's what I want to say. He allowed me to see I am still fighting. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. And that when we do everything that we're supposed to be doing, we really reflect God. And it shows how we are being bring it to others and help others to come on board. Well, and the first thing I, you got, I, the understanding got. of the knees. Well, Praise well, the Lord. You well, got the understanding, yeah. now you just... Uh, choose, That's right. you choose the power of choice, yes. but you have, uh, you choose to act <laughs> accordingly. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 like, Very lovingly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Yes, I would like to, oh, I would like to add something. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we at seven day Adventists, we believe that we are the only ones that God has chosen. Oh, while he can choose anybody in the world Come out of her, my people. to go they to will. high places yeah. Yeah. and to teach and what we don't teach. teach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we, we think that we have that, we are saved, and we stay in a compound, we don't spread the message. 
Amen. So God goes to those people who are searching for him Amen. and endure them with the spirit, with knowledge to preach the, the message that was supposed to preach uh, to the world. The last four things on here, trust in God, faith, prayer, and worship, nonstop. I'd like to share a prayer with you, if I may. Lord God, we ask you to give us all around peace in our mind, body, soul, and spirit. We want you to heal and remove everything that is causing stress, grief, sorrow in our lives. Anything that is not from you, Lord, please guide our path through life and make our enemies be at peace with us. Lord, we're so grateful for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.